that it wasn't really his typical movie. I, honestly, I was like, hey, that's good. I like him as an actor. I think he's very talented. Maybe we're a little old for the weed smoking movie guy. Like, let's uh, try something new, shall we? An intergenerational fish out of water story with two Seth Rogans and there's pickles. Oh, baby, you are speaking my language. This week, we're talking about an American pickle on the Everyman Movie Review. Hey everybody and thank you for joining me for yet another episode of the Everyman Movie Review. I am so excited to be back with you and reviewing brand new content and new movie reviews means we're back to the same old schedule. That means two episodes a week, one Thursday and one day in between and back to our own schedule, meaning we're going to talk a little bit about people in the movie, we're going to talk a little bit about the movie, I'll have a small spoiler section and then at the end you'll have my recommendation on whether or not this movie is for you. So Seth Rogen was a huge part of my life growing up. I think he's like maybe a few years older than me. So he was basically making movies when he was five years older than me about when he was five years younger or you know about me and I've grown up with that all along. Now I don't smoke marijuana. So Uh, We miss out on that part of it. But otherwise, I think we are basically like in tune with each other, especially when it comes for, apparently, our love of pickles. But before we get too far into it, let's get through the pleasantry, shall we? An American Pickle was directed by Brandon Trost. It was written by Simon Rich, based on the short story that he wrote called Sellout. It is starring, of course, Seth Rogen as Herschel Greenbaum and Ben Greenbaum, Sarah Snook as Sarah Greenbaum, Molly Evanson as Clara, Elliot Glazier as Christian, Kaylin Allen as Kevin, Sean Whalen in his first role I've seen him in in a while, I think, uh, and not one that's like a creepy dude. So good for you, Sean, as The Scientist. Jeffrey Cantor as David Greenbaum, Carol Leifler as Susan Greenbaum, and Jorma Tacombe as Liam. So when I first saw the advertising for this movie, and again, it's weird to be in LA because I don't know how much they marketed it anywhere else, but on my scoot to work, Uh, Going up Franklin Avenue, there was a huge billboard with an American pickle on it. And I said, hmm, old timey, Seth Rogen, pickles, I'm in. You got me. But this movie was not what I expected at all. First of all, it was on HBO Max. Luckily, I have HBO Max. (laughs) So it's on HBO Max. So I, I get to be a little hipstery about it, if you will. Like, oh, I'm sorry, you don't have HBO Max? You can't watch the pickle movie? Oh, poor thing. But all that aside, uh, I also was just excited because I do like Seth Rogen. And even if this wasn't going to be his typical fare, and that's basically what I was hearing on Twitter and other places, Reddit, that it wasn't really his typical movie. Uh, Honestly, I was like, hey, that's good. I like him as an actor. I think he's very talented. Maybe we're a little old for the weed smoking movie guy. Like, let's uh, try something new, shall we? And he did. He tried this movie. And it is complex. You know, they build it as a comedy, but it's kind of a dry comedy. It's more of a dramedy than it is a true comedy. If you're going in and expecting, you know, Pineapple Express, you're going to be disappointed. It ain't that. But Seth Rogen plays Herschel Greenbaum. Uh, He is in somewhere in Eastern Europe. Uh, I know they said the country, but I want to say it's a fictional country. Uh, It's somewhere where the Cossacks would have invaded. So Eastern Europe, likely Southeastern Europe. Vaguely Russian, but not really Russian, and uh, the Cossacks invade him. So, uh, but he finds a woman that he loves. He finds a way that he can impress her by buying a fish or a fish head, uh, and he does it by making pickles. And uh, so, buying her the fish makes her fall in love because the early 1900s are weird, I guess. And um, after they fall in love, he wants to make a better life for her. So, of course. They do what millions of people did, and they come to America. So he and his wife, Sarah, come to America, and assumedly, based on the precept, uh, they have a child, and then sometime after their family starts to bloom, he gets a job at a pickle factory, and, uh, oh yeah, he didn't make her pickles because he learned to make pickles from the guy at the pickle factory, I'm pretty sure. So nonetheless, he gets a job at a pickle factory. And uh, there is this kind of super funny scene, but like, like, oh, chuckle, chuckle scene. Not really, like, funny, funny, but, like, funny, weird, or uh, off-putting, I guess. Where, like, um, he is accidentally knocked into a pickle vat, and they put the cap on, and then immediately the place goes out of business. And so they put they hang up the, like, out of business and condemned, and nobody goes in. So for 100 years, nobody goes in. And then now it's 2020, and some kids work their way into this pickle factory that, for some reason, is still in Brooklyn and hasn't been gentrified or changed into something else, like... 
you know, uh, Cheesecake Factory. I just feel like those themes are similar. Pickle Factory and a Cheesecake Factory. And like, I guess Cheesecake Factory is like uh, Egyptian, right? Semi-Egyptian, so maybe not. But they're both factories. I'm getting off topic. So anyway, these kids go in and they accidentally knock the top off the pickle vat. And <gasps> Herschel's alive. He's been in this pickle vat. And don't question the science. That's, that's the number one thing. They don't question the science. Just go with it. We're going to give them that one. That one thing. So uh, after he comes out of the pickle vat, uh, he is, you know, scooped up by some scientists who run some tests on him and figure out that he truly is a hundred years, over a hundred years old, and they track down the only really living relative he has in New York City, and that person still lives in Brooklyn. And so he gets to meet his great grandson, great great grandson Ben, and of course Ben and Herschel look exactly alike because they're both played by Seth Rogen. One's just like a young New York hipster, and then Herschel looks like a uh, old. New York hipster, Echo Park resident. It's kind of ironic, actually. So maybe Ben is more like a Manhattan resident, and he's a Brooklyn resident. They would both fit in, so that's what it comes down to. So Herschel goes home with Ben, and obviously he's trying to get accustomed to the modern world. He was sealed in a pickle vat before there were cars, and now Ben summons an Uber to the curb and has to convince Herschel to get in. I think that we are about to go on this crazy fish out of water story um, that involves like them... Herschel coming to terms with like learning about the new world and his hopes and dreams and kind of making them fit into this new world feeling and Ben having to get used to going from being like a, a bachelor who's always on his own to having a family member and maybe the old world charm and the old world lessons can teach Ben something and Ben can teach Herschel how to live in the new world and they'll come together and it'll be amazing. And there's this thing kind of at the beginning where, where they go to find the Jewish cemetery in Brooklyn and it's in like this rundown place under the freeway or the highway and there's like a a vodka sign right above it so like there's this russian looking down on them and of course herschel huge fear of cossacks and russians so he doesn't like that that sign's there and the cemetery's just in disrepair including sarah's uh tombstone so um that's very upsetting for him and so i think we're uh, we're about to go on this great journey it's right about here that i gotta cut because basically everything after this is going to be a spoiler especially if you haven't seen it so i do have some non-spoiler thoughts about the movie as a whole but of course those are better left to the end so if you don't want the spoiler skip down to the time down below uh because the spoilers are coming at you right now so what follows of course is this weird thing where Herschel and Ben instead of like working together and then like having some difficulties and working it out and being family instead of having that like what I was expecting once I got the setup of the movie they basically have like a hour-long dick measuring contest where they try to decide hey um, which one of us is better and they sabotage each other and they go around each other and they hurt each other and none of it really makes sense. I do not, I, the whole time I was like, why would you do that? Why would you do that? And then there's like this vaguely Trumpian, and I think that it was supposed to be part of a metaphor about like, everybody who supports Trump has this old world mentality about people and how they are, and, and they say these things and they do these things. And I'm like, okay, really? but what's the point? It just, it felt so weird. And like, you, they start out with like Herschel like opening, like get, taking jars out of the trash and washing them and getting rainwater and making pickles and their most delicious pickles. And I'm like, Ben, my boy, this is it. Help your grandfather, great grandfather. And then this is your ticket. Like you guys can work together and build this thing. And instead they just sabotage each other. And like when Ben hurts Herschel, then Herschel hurts Ben and then Ben hurts him back. And then Twitter and, you know, he teaches him about interns and like Herschel's living in a park and then he calls the state on him a couple of, like there's a lot of nonsense in between. That's what I'll say. There's a lot of nonsense in between. But he also like makes $200,000 in a couple of days, $600,000 in a couple of days and buys the the billboard and cuts it down and then cleans up the, the cemetery and he's doing a lot of good things. And then there are these like heartwarming moments where Ben kind of tells a story about how he thinks he's disappointed his parents and this is their thing and and we find out that the app that he's designing is named after their nicknames and he really just wants to make it good but then Herschel ruins that on purpose like again the sabotage and it just it did not track for me I could not track from point to point and I'll get back to that kind of at the end but you know how it all wraps up is of course that then Herschel becomes persona non grata 
because he never had papers, apparently. Again, getting in that Trumpian illegals thing. Ben helps him to get to the border. Herschel conks him over the head, shaves his beard, convinces the ice that that is Herschel, and they deport him back to wherever. And now Ben gets to learn this lesson about being in the old world. And by the way, that, that lesson could have been taught by Herschel in New York, but Anyway, uh, so Ben comes to terms with it and an eventual Herschel shows up and they go back to New York together and they make up and become a family. And like, OK, so we're there. We got we got back to it. but We took this long, circuitous route that was unnecessary and it's just taxing. So I guess the like happy ending for this is that they're both ruined and in both being ruined, they have nothing but each other. So now they can start building that relationship because there's nothing that can be brought in between them. There's a similar lesson and a better way to get there. And I don't know why they went this way, I guess. But again, that's getting into kind of the overview of the movie. And I want everybody to be a part of that. So uh, that's all the spoilers. Spoiler, it's not a great movie. But we're going to talk more about that. Uh, we're going to invite everybody back in and I'll give my overview. Uh, and that's going to start right now. Okay, so overall, this is what I think about the movie. I like Seth Rogen. I like him in the dual parts. I think he did an amazing job separating two characters. Herschel's got this weird Eastern European accent. I think he did an excellent job. He was at least consistent. It didn't sound like it was from anywhere in particular, but it was consistent throughout. And you could tell when Ben was Ben and Herschel was Herschel. And like the moments that they're together and they have to do like shooting it twice, months apart for the beard or whatever. Excellent job. Excellent job in shooting the actual movie and getting to see places in Brooklyn that I remember. It's, uh, and if, especially if you're from New York, you'll probably enjoy just seeing that part of New York. But the screenplay itself. So I said uh, that it was written by the same guy who wrote the short story. This movie feels like a short story that got elongated outward to a feature film. It did, so that makes sense. And maybe it's even a step beyond that. It's as if they stretched out this short story and they said, here's where we end and here's where we start. And then we're gonna take a couple things from the middle and we're going to make those beats and, you know, kind of inside baseball on writing the one of the I don't write like this, but some people do. Eh, I guess some depending on the project, I will. But you create what's called a beat sheet. And that's here's kind of an outline of the story. And here are the most important things that happen in between. Those are the beats of the movie. And you can even make a beat sheet that has the big beats and then the, the small beats in between. And if you have an A and a B story, you'll put the beats from A and the beats from B. And how do they intersect if they do? And it really felt like they kind of nailed the beats. Those heartwarming moments were great. They were islands of like fantasticness in the script. But in between, it feels like the movie just kind of wanders and gets lost. This would have been a really amazing short film, like a 25 or 30 minute film, top notch. Probably would have won some awards at, at film festivals. You can't do that for, you know, HBO Max. You gotta have a full length film. It might have even made like a great long version of a short film, a short feature film, where we're just going to kind of jump in between those beats. Because again, leading into and coming out of those beats was pretty good. It's the stuff that happened in between the, not the, I don't want to call it the filler because it's, that's the heart of the movie is, is those things that get you from where you are to where you're going to go. But those things were just so distracting. I could not enjoy it. And that is heartbreaking. Because this movie had everything going for it. Two Seth Rogans, Sarah Snook, who I, I enjoy as a comedian. I think she's very funny. She's also on Succession I, and it, as a totally different character kind of there. And we don't see her a lot, but, you know, we see her as, as Herschel's wife in scenes. And, and she's got this, like, down-home mentality as of, like, a, an Eastern European wife. And that's very different from her on Succession. But it's, it's like, kind of hard to put your finger on why it's not good. Because the writing itself isn't bad. Um, the beats are good. The open and the close is good. Seth Rogen's good. Everyone in the movie is doing, does a pretty fine job of acting. It's like making a cake. You put in all the right ingredients, you cooked it, but if you don't have them in the right order, if one thing is just a little off, that cake is not going to be good. And that's American Pickle. It's not a good cake. So listen, if you're a huge Seth Rogen fan, like a completist, and you want to see everything that he produced, this is going to be a movie that you're going to want to see anyway, right? You probably have already seen it. If you like quirky movies that are interesting, this is one of those. And if you are a cinephile like myself, then you're probably going to 
find something to like about this movie, even if it's judging it for being what it is. It is not a comedy. And I just enjoyed seeing Seth Rogen in something that wasn't a comedy. I like to see the way that he played off himself. Like, again, the characters were so different that he was doing an excellent job playing off himself. That's really hard. And it showed how dynamic an actor he is. But if you're just an average guy or average girl who's just watching a movie for entertainment value, I think you're going to come out of this frustrated more than anything else. And the likelihood is you're going to turn it off in the middle. You're going to get about 40, 45 minutes in and turn it off. Yeah, I, I saw people online saying like, oh, I wanted to see more of stuff before Herschel comes to America. Sure, there is a movie, Herschel Comes to America, where we see him in the old world and all of his life there and his motivators from getting here. This is a intergenerational fish out of water story that's got a kind of like a time travel, but not really time travel, aspect to it. And again, the the new generation learns from the old, the old generation learns from the new. There was a De Niro movie, is it The Intern, where he, he's, play, he's like an old guy starting over and he's an intern. That, that, fish out of water, intergenerational, and they're learning from each other. It could have been that. It could have been a very interesting version of that, but it wasn't. So for most movie viewers who have a lot of stuff going on in their life, you got a lot of things vying for your attention. First of all, you got to pay extra for this platform. It's on HBO Max. If you don't already have it, you got to pay for it. And I know personally, I have nine or more streaming platforms to choose from. My list, like two watch lists on all of those, we have to be up to like 40 or 50 movies at this point. And on top of that, I don't know if you've heard, I'm running for president. You can find more information about that at, at Rob Cheek for Prez on all your social media and robcheekforpresident.com for the website. I've got my own social media at Robert N. Cheek on all your social networks. And of course, my own website, robertncheek.com, where you can find links to all the videos that I'm doing, my daily, now daily podcast that I'm doing, and the books that are available on Amazon. Like everything is available there. I got the Everyman Movie Review stuff. You can find links for that down below. So I have other stuff to watch and a lot of stuff vying for my attention. I mean, I got to take an entire night out of my week to do the Oh The Anthem podcast that I do with my buddy Corey. And I love that. It's one of my favorite parts of my week. You can find more about that at OhTheAnthem.com and at oh the Anthem on social media. But time is precious and we only have so much of it and we have so many things vying for our attention. And I'm, I think I'm upset because this movie had so much potential. The way that it was marketed, I was all in. The first 15 minutes, 20 minutes of the movie, I was all in. And it just didn't deliver on what it promised. And, I, you know, I make that kind of the tagline of the Everyman Movie Review. Does a movie deliver on what it promised? No, this one did not. So not only am I saying, is it not for everybody? I am absolutely saying, skip it. Unless you are a very specific movie watcher, the ones I talked about before, skip this movie. Not worth your time, not worth the effort, and not worth the frustration. But you know what is worth the frustration? the couple of days you're gonna have to wait for the next Everyman Movie Review. We got two coming every single week, Thursday and one day in between. So it's only gonna take a few more days until you get to cleanse your palate from this terrible pickle movie. And don't forget if you need a palate cleanser before that, like right now, I got a whole catalog full of reviews of great stuff that you may wanna check out. So make sure you check out the playlist above. But until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other in these trying times. Have a great week, everybody.